Okay, let's start. Uh, so you can start recording. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my lightning talk for uh, our Etheris project in Sri Lanka. Uh, this was part of the PIO conference on Monday, and we uh, had a conference on all those blockchain projects which are working in the area of social impact. And we as Israelis, together with our partners Oxfam and Aon, we have been building uh, crop insurance for smallholder farmers in Sri Lanka. And I just want to give you an overview on what has happened there, what, what are we doing, what are the next steps, and why is blockchain important for this uh, project. So first of all, what is microinsurance? Uh, we are working in this area of microinsurance or inclusive insurance. There are millions of smallholder farmers around the world in most uh, developing countries and these are farmers which mostly have about one or two acres of land. This uh, small plot of land will uh, feed the whole family and those people mostly have no access to finance, to insurance, to banking. Uh, in, in the meantime, most of them have, have a cell phone but uh, probably not a smartphone. So no internet access very basic, uh, but these people earn their living and it's a very important sector. But if something extreme happens, and you all know the climate changes and we have uh, more and more climate catastrophes, and these climate catastrophes are a vital threat to these people. And uh, a single uh, thunderstorm can destroy the whole harvest. That means for six months the family does not have any income. So obviously that is the case for insurance and inclusive insurance will cover this but as you can see here on this uh, world map the coverage for, uh, for <coughs> uh, in inclusive insurance is still on a very low level. So uh, from the total of 100% coverage which would mean everybody has an inclusive insurance, we have 8% in Latin America, we have 5% in, in the average in Africa, and we have 7% here in the Asian and Oceanian room. So plenty of space, it's a huge potential, and all the big insurance companies have all noticed that's an opportunity for them. So they are all trying to dive into this, but they don't understand the needs of the local people. So we want to change this, and this is why we work together not only with an insurance company, but also with uh, and company Oxfam, most of you know uh, Oxfam is a company which is dedicated to alleviate the hunger and poverty in the world and uh, they have offices all over the world and uh, they are deeply rooted in the countries and uh, they have a network of uh, local people and that is exactly the contrast to the insurance companies which mostly have a nice office in Zurich as a uh, Geneva C uh, or some, somewhere, uh, and uh, but they are not rooted in the uh, local countries. So why can we do something with blockchain? So we try to bridge the option of Oxfam with the uh, opportunities of the insurance companies. Insurance companies have risk uh, capacity, and Oxfam has the uh, routing in the country and. Oxfam has no technology which is efficiently enough to cover the needs of these people. So we build this with blockchain. Blockchain helps to build insurance products which are fully automated, which have no human agents or very small amount of uh, human interactivity and so they are very cheap. They can run automatically and because we use blockchain, you don't need a super expensive protected in, uh, IT infrastructure because the, the security of the system is uh, given by our blockchain smart contract. So smart contracts govern the whole process. Uh, they, uh, they implement the whole life cycle of an insurance policy. They are data driven, so uh, the, as well the, the input data, the farmer's data, product data, that is all stored on blockchain, but also if a loss happens, or uh, um, uh, for example a thunderstorm or a flood or a drought, then this data is fed into the smart contract and then automatically triggers the payout so that the payout can be in hours or in, in, in minutes if people have access to online payment, which is not the case, but in, uh, even if they have uh, only access to cash, then 
uh, we can shorten the time between the loss and the payout to some hours or days, which is an extreme improvement. So this is uh, what we learned. We have uh, now conducted a first season in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka we have two uh, monsoon sessions every year and monsoon means either drought or flood. And uh, not, it's not evenly distributed but you have uh, some small areas which are flooded and uh, 10 kilometers away you have drought. So it's uh, a nice case for insurance because insurance always means you need a risk which is not uh, affecting everybody, because uh, if everybody would get a payout, then the insurance company would uh, quickly be broken and then uh, you would not have an insurance anymore. But here in this case, you have some areas which are affected and uh, so you can build an insurance product and uh, this insurance product has been uh, in, the, in place for about two years, but with very little usage and because it's inefficient. The processes are completely paper-based and we implemented the whole paper-based process now on blockchain and we reduced the time for processing from uh, days to hours or from days to instant processing and uh, that is uh, some huge gain for these people. So that is the learnings from uh, the first season we, we can reduce the time, we can in, implement a huge efficiency, but of course there are still some challenges left. As I told you, uh, most people don't have smartphones, don't have internet access, and of course they have no idea of blockchain. So uh, the, the worst thing what we can do is, uh, hey guys, we have a product with blockchain into it because nobody will understand. So we of course will have a user interface, and in the user interface you won't see any keys, any, uh, any notes, or any uh, extra additional stuff, uh, but just a plain user interface and uh, everything uh, connected with blockchain is happening in the background. Of course, in the future, we plan to uh, implement, um, for example, a payment system, a crypto-based payment system, and our partner Oxfam is already experimenting with this in, in another area of the world, in Vanuatu. They have uh, there implemented a complete payment system yeah, people have uh, a phone application uh, and they can pay with crypto, with DAI, in certain stores uh, which are uh, specially prepared. They have uh, cash uh, machines which can accept uh, DAI and so people can use uh, crypto currency to pay for their seed and uh, fertilizer and whatever. And so we try now to combine these initiatives, so one of the challenges is payment integrate a crypto payment system for these farmers. That means uh, we need, somehow need to find out how we can uh, distribute uh, devices for them, so small and simple devices, which uh, maybe even in, in, a, in a step in between we will use text messages, something. Uh, these are also nice technological challenges. The other challenge is weather data. They, the, the whole process is controlled by automated weather stations and the weather stations are distributed on the country, transmit their data via uh, <coughs> wireless LAN or uh, some uh, mobile cell connection, but these stations are still not reliable enough. So to cure this, we need more stations, we need <coughs> a, a smaller network uh, and, and uh, a, a lower granularity of these stations. And uh, the second challenge and the third challenge is the onboarding process. Currently, the insurance company still needs to record all the data of the farmers and we try to decentralize this, that in every village there is some responsible person, <coughs> the local farmers organization, which records the data and uh, also promotes the product so the insurance company uh, can offer the product at a very low fare. So a lot of uh, challenges and uh, we can also go one step beyond. We can not only automate the whole insurance process, but we can also, in a second step, uh, enable a risk transfer along the value chain. So for example, um, uh, there is an insurance in Sri Lanka and the people who benefit from this insurance in, in the long term are customers, for example, in Europe, because they buy the rice, the tea, the spice, so uh, the, the, food, uh, the, the food companies uh, which uh, distribute these uh, goods in Europe, in America or elsewhere, they have an interest that their farmers have a sustainable production. So 
So they are interested that the farmers get an insurance. So we, we get a circle where people in Europe pay a small amount, a part of the price of a certain good is transferred to the farmer and the premium is uh, reduced by, by this uh, piece of the, of the price. And so the, for the farmer, the insurance becomes even more affordable because currently that is also a big obstacle that uh, for these small farmers, even the, the low insurance premiums are still a relevant factor in their cash flow. So we try to reduce them and uh, this needs uh, a whole process. So we, we need uh, uh, to approve that the, pre the, the money from Europe, from the consumers, is actually transferred to the insurance premiums and is, is used for insurance premium and not for something else. The same could be word for charity donations. That's also a third uh, Oxfam project where, where they collect uh, charity donations and uh, via blockchain the trans donation is transferred to a certain place where there is a need and uh, the, whole trans uh, the whole process is transparent and this could also help to reduce the premiums. And so this is a uh, final picture. Uh, we have a process where the farmer is protected. We have a processing of the policy in a blockchain system. We uh, have an insurer which is connected to the system and which uh, provides the risk bearing capital. And on the <coughs> lower side we have the value chain and supply chain where uh, consumers pay and the, uh, the money goes back to the farmer and helps to pay for the premium. So this is something which has really big uh, future. Uh, we hope that we can roll it out in a larger style next year. We are planning the next season now with a factor of 10 to 20 of farmers. And um, uh, we are currently applying for a, a large grant in the European uh, community together with uh, a big insurance company and with the help of Aon and Oxfam. And this would allow us to bring this to uh, not only to Sri Lanka but also to Kenya, to Colombia other countries uh, with a very similar system. Probably the, uh, the perils are a bit different. Sometimes some people or some uh, crop is affected not by rain, but maybe of wind, hurricanes, or other perils, pests, and so on. So this will be different, but the logic behind will always be the same. And uh, of course, we use the Isaris GIF system, which is something like the uh, operating system for insurance. So if you want to learn more about this, then I can invite you to our specialized conference, the D1Conf, which we organized for the third time, this year in Malta. And uh, Malta is a very beautiful island, and even if uh, you come just to Malta, I think it's worth the travel. So uh, behind on the table you can have some uh, flyers, and uh, I would like to see all of you in Malta on the 5th and 6th November and discuss and learn and build uh, together with us new ideas. We have also some other projects like Nexus Mutual there and uh, this, they are from the DeFi side of things. So that all is one big community and uh, we are happy to be part of it. Thank you very much for your time and audience and <coughs> have a nice time here at Front 5.